What is up? What is up? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Grease Couch Chronicles. Yeah. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. And if you're here visually and audibly, shop Glow Nude. Glow Nude is having a good uh, spring, I hear, right? Yeah, man. Um, Yes, guys. Visit us on our Instagram at glow.nude. 100% organic skincare products for your skin, for every skin. I want to let you guys know again because I've been having to say this a lot. Our no, soaps I lie. are sold out for right now. Okay. I will have an announcement when they're back in stock. However, you can shop the things. If you're here visually, you can shop the things that are on the table, which is the scrubs and the deodorant. Limited quantities in stock. Right? Everything you need to know, this is why I say it all the time here, is on our Instagram at glow.nude. So head on over there. Please. DM for inquiries. DM for inquiries. Yeah, man. That DM means send inquiries. send a message to Glow Nude and they yes. will get back to you. Send us a message and we'll get back to you. Also, um, not all bad news, but thank you guys for for shopping with us. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for always being our lovely customers. It's well appreciated, you know? Yeah, shout outs to Glow Nude and shout outs to the fam, you know what I mean? Let's get going. Um Real quick, because I see that it's everywhere, apparently, and um, it's crazy what I've been hearing. It's it's hard to avoid, especially if you're on TikTok, and um, I've been on a TikTok streak, because, you know, it's going to be gone soon, so might as well. Um, <laughs> what's going on with Nickelodeon, the Quiet On Set documentary? Um, I see a lot of people coming out and um, voicing their opinions on it. Sheesh, yo. So, um, if you're new, or if you're just not on the internet, or even know what's going on, pretty much Dan Schneider, the creator of Nick- Nickelodeon TV and stuff like that, um, he's under fire because apparently he's been involved in some lewd acts with the child stars. You know, he's just doing some really bad things and ch- trying to get people to um, do things behind the scenes. And, you know, he's recording videos that with the kids. Everyone was a kid at the time. So it's kind of hard to avoid what he's been doing. And, um, yeah, they made a documentary about it. Um, th- one of the most shocking ones was what Drake uh, Bell had to say about his situations with the um, creators and writers. And it's not, it's just kind of it's disappointing because, you know, I mean, these kids were chasing their dreams at one point and then to, to have anything come to a halt because, you know, I mean, they were being essayed or, you know, just, you know, they, they were minors and being treated not as such by, I guess, people that they expected better behavior from. So it's just really sick what they were doing to the child stars at the time. Yeah, and to what's disheartening as well is that, like, a lot of people spoke up about this before. and Amanda Bynes being one of them. Amanda Bynes. Everybody thought she was McCurdy crazy. And, and all these people, they, they had things to say, and they were screaming out for help. But, you know, people kind of just swept it under the rug. And so now I'm kind of happy. Well, I am happy that they're getting the, the spotlight on them now to, to bring light to the situation. And what I don't like is... This man literally goes on a podcast and say, hey, I would like to apologize. Like who? One of the the guys that did something. Um, Dan was Dan Schneider. Like this is recently he did this. Yeah. He went on a podcast oh, with, nah. after it was aired. Oh, no. Nah. He went on a podcast. Tebow from iCarly. I'm, I'm not sure his real name, but yeah, he Tebow was the one conducting the interview and he was saying like, he was distraught. Talking about oh he appeared to be distraught. I want to apologize, like sir. Where was a lot of people were getting paid. Yeah, they were getting paid to like shh, be hush hush about it. Yeah, like come on, man. These are kids. Like I was, I'm surprised because I didn't even know. Like nobody came up. The only person that I really saw that really just took a charge of it was Jeanette McCurdy, which kind of gave everybody else like, yo, we should probably, we should probably come out and say something about it. So her saying something proof to me that it was happening and then now the documentary confirmed that so shout outs to everybody getting the bravery enough to come out and say something about it so yeah shout outs to that and um, what i think is happening is a lot of the ndas that yeah people are getting being paid parents are being paid so it's like whatever yeah a lot of the ndas that parents were be like signed probably expired now that oh yeah true adults Adults, yeah yeah able to speak up on it now and I think NDAs is nasty work. It's nasty work because 
you're gonna you're gonna give me a piece of paper to sign to say hey shut up about yeah you this. can't really say anything yeah like I'm, I'm so it's called quiet on set yeah i'm gonna do something bad to you but don't tell nobody you're gonna <laughs> sign this that's crazy like it's dude. crazy and shame on the parents who who knew that um because to my knowledge allegedly um drake's dad said to the mom don't leave my son with this this person and yeah, she like still did, did the it. mom still did so shame on all the parents who knew what was going on and didn't Jeanette do McCurdy's mom being one of them as well that's yeah. what the book title is called I'm glad my mom died yeah man like come on your yeah, job well, as a parent is to protect your kid like always at all costs and for you to single handedly sign your kid over for that type of stuff pedophilia on on the str- off the strength of bread, my nigga. Come on, like. And I think no. one of the one of the dudes did like thirteen months or something. The dude that um ass- assaulted Drake Bell, you know, sexually assaulted him. He only did a few months, and then got out and then went on to do more. Yeah, on work. the set of Zach and Cody. Yeah, yeah. Like, wow. That is crazy, wow. man. Crazy. So yeah, if you're into trying to understand what happened or trying to see what we're talking about it's called quiet on set to documentary um i don't think i'd be able to watch it because i'll just be too yeah, I upset tried to. and un- angry but, yeah. but um yeah i just feel like that is just really messed up and it brought me back to cat williams interview with uh shannon sharp earlier this year um you know about him saying like it's gonna the truth about hollywood is gonna come out so mm-hmm. i think we're really witnessing that in full f- full force yeah with, so with, with mr <laughs> Diddy and, and yeah, dude. Like I don't know what Cat Williams perceived in his visions, but he that's a raven to all of this. So I mean, for him to know, like this is what I liked about Cat Williams. He went on the platform, he named names, and he stood ten toes down on the reality. Because a lot of people come on the shows and they be like, "Well, such and they and and yeah." They don't name names. <laughs> and I'm so being thankful. around the bush like a gardener. Yeah, still. I'm so thankful that he went on the platform. <laughs> And that's what we got to do. We have to name names because these people get to go to bed unscathed while everybody's suffering. That's true. That's true. Essay is not a, a simple. People are crying till this day. It happened years ago. Yeah. Drew like, Bell's crying, bro. It's not a simple so, manner. Bro, and it's like, something damn. that you have to deal with for the rest of your life. So imagine that. You know, we got to make sure our babies are safe, man. Yeah, honestly. We got to protect the kids. Because what? Kids gonna do what they wanna. Right? <laughs> Man. Like, yeah. come on. That's that on that still. Um let's stick around that. Uh what if you saw your kid fighting? What would you do? I always <laughs> <laughs> you know throw punches and shit, you throw kicks. <laughs> I, <laughs> Karate. I always like wonder what I would do if I saw my kid fighting. And and honestly the realistic answer is I don't know. Like okay. like at this age. I don't know, cause you know, as a parent, you'd want to be like jump in, <laughs> like, but I'm not gonna beat. No. Going blow for blow. <laughs> I'm not. You punch him, I punch him. You punch him, I punch him. <laughs> no, but in seriousness, I always tell him like, you know, take the proper measures. I've always spoke of the steps that I tell him to take on this platform. So go listen back. But I don't I, know. I think I would see how far it gets. Like I'll stay, like I'll stay from afar, see how far it gets. Like if he's if he's winning, then I'll pull him off. If he's losing, I'll I'll let him lose for a little bit more, and then I'll stop the fight. Cause I feel like there's something about losing a fight that really builds your character. Because you don't want to win too much fights and then feel like you could fight everybody. You know right, what I mean? So true. you you set a bad example. So I feel like if the if your kid is winning, you should pull him off immediately. Cause you don't want to be the one to watch a kid stomp out another kid so it's like yo what am i raising am i raising a monster <laughs> are you a villain bro <laughs> not, only, not only that too so you want your kid to be able to problem solve yeah. on their own because yeah. you're not going to be there forever so i guess it makes sense to you know watch it from afar for a little bit because they're kids you know what i'm saying yeah. so i agree with that sentiment yeah but definitely don't jump in <laughs> Because <laughs> that would be bad, especially there's adults around. They're like, "Yo, what is so, what is your problem? <laughs> what are you doing?" So, I've always thought that was interesting. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of like, I guess there's parenting books, but I'm pretty sure they don't cover fights. They don't like. There's not 
a rule book on parenting. <laughs> there really is There's not, books, though. It's not like there isn't books. There is books, but it's... But who's to say they're, like, 100% right? It's probably, books right? on, like, oh, how to get your kid not to choke. Like, how to yeah, give yeah. your kid the Heimlich maneuver. survival type vibes. Yeah, like, but these are things that you can actively... You're, you're not a jackass. Are you going to let your kid choke? Yeah, yeah. It it's no parenting books on, like, the real-life situation. You kind of just got to, like, chuck and jive. You know, through it as a parent, so I've always found found like the other side of things interesting. You know what I mean? Like you know, when you your kid goes to try to drive your car, like you know what I mean? Look, stuff that they don't they won't tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You find your kid trying to steal money out of your purse. It's like, <laughs> what to do? You know what I mean? Those type of shit. What's your thing? You, you you as when you grew up. You know you did certain things. Yeah, so that's to, what I've always thought. Like you know, especially try, us. Like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to, try, to try to when you can't try to take your gun. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to try to act like oh, or think in your brain like oh, my kid is not gonna do this. Because yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Like yo, I always think about what you did. If they're not gonna like honestly kill, commit a crime for real, for real. Let kids be kids. You know what I'm saying? Let them run around. Give them some money. You know, let them ride bikes. Let them do kid stuff. So you're for the allowance? Yeah, I'm for the allowance. Okay, shout out to that type vibes. You know what I mean? Because you got to see how they're going to spend their money from young. (laughs) For real. Endless chips and shit. Yeah, let me see how you finna spend your money. That's a huge deciding factor on if I'm going to give you the type of allowance that you want like but then it's a- their money when you give it to them it's your money now so you shouldn't be able to police that i don't think i can police the amount so instead mm. of giving you let's say instead of giving you like 200 i'm gonna limit it to maybe 75 or 100 because i'm not gonna have you buying 50 bags of takis <laughs> and, and prime like, that's true yeah no nah, you're right there you're right true All right, one more. Um, this is a light one. It's a light episode today, just because. Uh, what child interests still remain present in your childhood, in your adulthood? Sorry. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, I was thinking about the stuff that I like to, that I used to like to do as a kid, and how did it show up now in my adulthood? Like, because I used to play with dolls a lot, and I'm trying to figure out how that shows up now. And I think it, it's more so with how I used to like do their hair and like make clothes for them so for how that shows up for me now is i i know and i like and i take interest in doing hair that doesn't mean i want to do it professionally but i realize that that's how that shows up for me now and mm. when i was a kid i used to like you know playing with dirt and grass and stuff making concoctions and now i know that so you mean like kid kid with then. cooking Damn. that's what where that came from mm, i'm I th- for me it would always been artistic stuff so like i was always drawing and stuff like that i didn't really paint till i got older like 23 24 is when i really started painting especially during the pandemic so um yeah i think it shows up in my adulthood you know the drawing transitioned over to painting so now i paint or i try my best to paint more now you know so yeah i think that's what the interest is for me i didn't pick up music like as an activity until i was about 16 17 and I still do music now. So if we're going back to childhood, I would have to say it's drawing. Because, you know, I used to drop Dragon Ball Z characters and stuff like that. So my... Probably that too. Huh? Uh, I was going to say, you were a, you were an adventurous kid. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that shows up in your adulthood as far as your independence. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I went... I still travel. I travel crazy <laughs> on my own too. Like, <laughs> I would get up and go to Japan. <laughs> I'm planning a Thailand trip today. I mean, you know, this year too. So... I'm, I've always been super, super adventurous if anybody knows me. So, yeah, I think that's still there. But I was thinking, like, since you're being, like, more practical, I was thinking more practical. So, yeah, my drawing became painting. My exploring the woods became exploring the world. So yeah. I think that's a really good question. And I think I advise you guys to think about it, too. Like, what aspects of your childhood now shows up in your adulthood? I think that's very interesting because that's how you stay connected, too, as a person and stay grounded. It's like, what are you latching on to that keeps that type of you know energy and aura in yourself present yeah because if you think about it when you're a kid you're mindlessly doing these things of course yeah and why i thought about it as well because we often tell 
kids like yo they're what they're doing now is silly or foolish but a lot of people was doing stuff as kid that transcend that transcends into their adulthood yeah that's true so it's very interesting actually yeah so lock into that and figure out like for yourself what's keeping you alive from your childhood mm, just to that But we are going to take a quick little break right here. This is a beat by me, J Degrees. Enjoy. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. And welcome back to the lighter episode. You know what I mean? Well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> 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 kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, try, try not to be insensitive. You already know how we can be sometimes. But um, <clears throat> uh, what do you like to eat for breakfast? I'm going to go first and then you can, you know, say what you have to say about the topic. Um, For me, I've always tried to run to because this takes me way back to my childhood. I always try to go, go to e either boiled eggs or scrambled eggs and then toast and then whatever else I could add to the mix. Because I've always felt like that was such a simple breakfast and you can really just make that and then go about your day and you'll kind of be filled. You know what I mean? So I always try to keep it simple because I always want to start my day and just get what I have to do in the day over with. So I always felt like thinking about your breakfast and what you like to eat and just making it and then go about your day is always important. And, you know, breakfast, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day type vibe. Nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what would you like to eat? For me, like, honestly, realistically, I like to eat food, like real food. So steak. Like rice and, and, <laughs> oh, yeah, and, you're vegan. Like, honestly, I like real, real food. Just and, interesting. And I saw like a, a topic and of somebody this this other dietitian, she posted that she was eating salmon and rice with broccoli for breakfast and people were getting at her like, That's not breakfast food. How could you eat But I'm like, Your body's not gonna say, Oh, this is dinner you're putting in your body. <laughs> like your body's not gonna Slow say, down, this is dinner. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna so, process it the same, yeah. Whatever, whatever food that you like within reason, like don't be eating no big back ass shit like pizza and mm -hmm. stuff for breakfast, you know. But I like to gear towards like you know whole foods for breakfast. I'm not too much of like a pancake sweet like cereal vibes, but I like to eat like yeah. Real I've really been cereal. I think I ate cereal when I was young, like yeah, fourth it was, grade. It was never it for me. Fifth grade, we never liked cereal growing up, so it's I never really it. adapted, but. I've always thought that was interesting. And um, yeah, sometimes I'll do the the big, like the regular food for breakfast. But my go-to is what I said, uh, eggs, scrambled eggs, boiled eggs. So yeah, shout out to that. And eat breakfast, man. Yeah. Some people really attack the day without it. I used to do it too. I mean, I technically I do too because I don't really eat until 12. But yeah, but I like just real food. And when I wake up in the morning, honestly, sometimes I don't really feel like eating. Yeah. Unless it's fruit, that's what you should break your fast with, honestly. But I like fruits. Yeah. But we're here. <laughs> we're here, guys. Sorry about last week, but, you know, we're going to make <laughs> yeah. it up. The music. Music break. take. Um, I'm really into the drill, of course, and um, I found some really good drill artists. Um, I'm talking about Cash Cobain for sure. Um, you know, I'm getting a lot of music from Instagram Reels, getting a lot of music from YouTube Shorts, getting a lot of music from TikTok, of course. And this one, yo, they'll they'll stretch a song. You know, what I mean, they'll make a <laughs> they'll make you you they'll make you hate the song. But you know, what yeah. I mean, I didn't hear this song that. before, <laughs> so you know, when I heard this, especially you know, going around, I'm like, yo, this is nice. Um, it's a drill mix. You know, what I mean, the, the, a lot of people are doing drill in a different way. Like, it's not even about shooting guns or nothing. It's just about vibes. Talking about the woman you like and stuff. So this is one of those. And I really like the vibe. This is giving me good summer vibes. Uh, Cash Cobain for sure. Check it out. New music. I'm trying to find an artist too that I recently discovered. Yeah. TSB. He has a song called Jagged Edge featuring Unknown T. That song's a good good one too. It's is it R&B? No. It's well, Drill. Drill. Nice. Okay. I got to check that one out. Yeah. And this guy that I've discovered. Like I've always listened to his music but I had never really locked in on his personal music he's always been featured on stuff um benson mm. he has good music afro beats um b b n x n yeah okay i gotta check that out you know what i mean 
<laughs> and uh this is a yard man still Nigel boy judgment um yeah i like this i've heard it a few times prior to today but i like it so you know it made it here to dcc um ch check it out um it's giving that dancehall vibes it's giving that like it's gonna be at the party a lot they're gonna be playing this <laughs> a lot it. so you Carnival's know what I mean? coming up too yeah in so Jamaica. check that out <laughs> and i think you know you should, you should have a, they're talking about the song of the summers already i haven't really heard anything that i've put in that category yet yeah um i'm hearing sexy red going around i don't listen to her enough to to do that yeah i don't so. i don't listen but for the simple fact that she's been plaguing my timeline i don't know what it is but I she's guess, doing something right her yeah, team's doing something right she dropped a song so i'm assuming that might be something for the spring i'm not even gonna say summer because we we have yet to hear a good summer <laughs> so still yeah <laughs> But we made it here, you know what I mean? Light episode, light day, you know what I mean? We we like to remind you that, you know, it don't always got to be serious sometimes. Yeah, we don't always got to serious out loud. <laughs> yeah, because, you know what I mean? I, I hear what y'all saying. Trust me, y'all come directly to me. But I, I get it, you know what I mean? This is the position I put myself in. But, um, you know what I mean? I mean, feedback is always welcome. Yeah, of course, of course. And um, we're still at the voice notes, so send us a voice note. You know what I mean? The links is on the Instagram. DCC, the Grease Crowds Chronicles. Um... Yeah, make sure you shop Glow Nude. Subscribe mm -hmm. to us on all our platforms, especially YouTube. Let's get us to a thousand. Still yeah. making her way to a thousand as well on our Instagram. Check that out. And um, yeah, as always, reward ourselves, reward everyone outside. But be safe out there, guys. Peace. <laughs>